Leo. You'd be sick eating that this time in the morning. You also let to take to school for your mates, don't you? Did you know this is the last pair of five to six year olds? Oh, it's not, is it? Uh -huh. Put it on the list. Okay, but this cash and carry list's already crawling off the page as it is. Well, I'll still stop you and gawk on me. Oh, come back, Jimmy Cork, and all is forgiven. No way, no more knockoff. We're legit now, remember? Oh, honestly, it might be the best policy, but it sure ain't the most profitable. It's gonna have to be. Far from anything else, Mick over Sergey thought we'd gone back to selling dodgy stuff. Anyway, there's no reason we can't make a go of it. Being legit, it's taking longer, that's all. I just want to live to see it. I don't want to be too old to cut the ribbon when we open the Bond Street branch. Josie and Mars, purveyors of fine clothing for the infant gentry. Leo, go and see your sister's dress, there's a love. And Leo, teeth, all right? Stop at the cash and carry on the way there, then, shall we? Is that before or after the chemists? Oh, no. What? It's all right, it's no big deal. I lay my hand upon this head, behold, 10,000 bugs are dead. What? Nothing to worry about. Everybody gets knit sometimes. Oh! Last. You all right? Oh, yeah, I'm just trying to get these out before I have to go into work. I was just doing a few things to Rod's. I like to use fabric conditioner on his, but he says it makes a itch. Oh, and by the way, you know the thing I was telling you about? Well, it's all right now. I thought it wasn't going to be, but it is. And anyway, I'm not. What? Oh, so you're not pregnant after all? It was a false alarm. No, but it's OK, because Rod was lovely about it, and he still wants to marry me just the same. Oh, that's great. Really pleased for you. Thanks. It means a lot, doesn't it, when your fellow loves you, no matter what? Come and have a look. Just getting the milk. Um, Max, I think you best come and see. It's gone. The Berlin abomination. It, it's not there. Oh yes, yeah, so it has. Finally, a, a victory for common sense. You see. I knew it. I knew it. As long as I ignored it for long enough, he'd be the first one to weaken. Listen, um, don't make a fuss. It'll just upset him. What, Thomas? Uh... Um, yeah. I mean, there's no need to be upset. Every kid gets them. Chicken box, isn't it? No, it's nothing as serious as that, no. See, I don't know where he's picked them up from, but the thing is he's got nits. Oh! What? What is it about this place? One plague lifts and another one descends. It's like one of those tacky movies you see. An unsuspecting family moves into the neighbourhood. No sooner have the credits rolled by and we're up to our ears in pestilence and ectoplasm. Is this place built on a sacred scar's burial ground or something? It's not as bad as all that. Don't say that. Who knows what the force has got in store for us next? I mean, we've already had sheds that go bump in the day, fences go up and down in the night. Who knows what next? We get rid of the headlights, that is. Well, that won't be too difficult. I'll walk Tank down to the chemist this afternoon and get him some lotion. Yeah, all right. Oh, um, you may as well check your head while you're at it, you know, in case you've picked him up from him. What? Well, that's all we need, isn't it? We'll finish your breakfast first, anyway. If my toe starts moving across the table, this house goes on the market today. You know, I wonder... I wonder if it would ward off the curse of the close if I sacrificed the Dixon's last born on the front garden. Hmm? <laughs> Morning. I uh, thought you might like a lift to work. No thanks. Well, just a friendly offer, you know. Now that I'm here, I might as well go in and see Terry. Terry's asleep. Oh. Worn him out, have you? You and Terry must be getting on better now, eh? Terry's asleep because he's been working nights. Why don't you just leave us alone? Or is that where you can't stand us, me and Terry? 
Poor Barry, no one loves him, does that it? Look, it's just come round to offer you a lift. Like I said, it was a friendly offer. I said, no thanks. Well, do you like getting the bus then? Or does it depend who's offering, like? So you saw me get a lift off Graham? Nothing wrong in getting an occasional lift from someone who happens to work in the same place as you, is there? As long as it is only occasional. Yeah, if he's passing. So what if it was every day? What's wrong with that? Nothing as far as I can see, but Teddy's not as broad-minded as me. And uh, what with you on track record? No, you're probably right. Trusting you as much as Teddy does, he probably wouldn't mind if I told him. If I mentioned it, like, you know. And what if I mentioned to Terry that you kissed me? Well, it depends which one of us he believed, wouldn't it? I'm gonna be late. Doesn't he like being kept waiting, then? Graham. Look at that. Terrible. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I washed that and gave that to Terry to put away, and he's not even worn. He's just shoved it in the corner with the rest of his dirty stuff. Yeah, terrible. I knew it, though, you know, Dee. I knew it. And you, if I ignored it long enough, he'd be the first to weaken. He must have sneaked out in the middle of the night and took that fence down, you know. Yeah, he must have. Anyway, it's down, and that's the end of it. All right, Barry, lad. What can I do you for? Hi, right, Ron's Dee Dee. Dee Dee? Yeah, sure. Go on through. Well, um, I've been thinking about your proposition. What proposition? And I've decided to let you have one of the units, rent free, for a couple of months. Uh, three, I think I said. OK, then, three. Uh, excuse me, am I allowed to know what's going on here or what? Better tell him he's got himself a shop, hadn't you? But listen, the price of the counters and the fittings and all that is down to you, and that is not negotiable, right? You got yourself a deal. I've got myself a deal. Hey, thanks a lot, Barry. And listen, don't worry about them fittings. I'll get them dead soon. Well, the sooner you get them, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Ta-da. Ta-da. Hey, thanks again, Barry. I thought you said you hadn't got me any back begging to him. I did beg. I just made him an offer he couldn't refuse. Oh, yeah. Like a horse's head in his bed, or what? Of course not. The horse's head was the next move. What is it, Art? he says. Awesome. I just sussed out that Barry needed us as much as we needed him. I'd have let it all go. Oh, come on. Who was it that fixed up the deal with Ponytail Smith in the first place? I just got Barry to agree to the same thing. Yeah, well... It... The main thing is, you've got a shop. Yeah. I've got a shop. <laughs> Dee Dee, I've got a shop. I've got a shop. Hey, listen, I'm oh. going to have to get them fittingsy ones and I'll have to make out a new stock list. I'm... We're going to be busy. Mm. <laughs> I've got a shop, I've got a shop. Been a bit of a glut on the market, watches like. But I should be able to get a fair price for them. You're OK, it's in that sound. And I had no chamois in me pocket. Sin, this is, uh... Always prefer to work on the no-name, no-pack drill base, if you don't mind, like. Well, you're OK, Finn. Sin's a mate. Sorry you can't stop. Oh, can I? Well, for your information, mate, this happens to be my flat that you and him are doing whatever you're doing in. That right. And very nice it is, too. But we wouldn't want to keep a man from his work now, would we, Jimmy? Yeah, uh, listen, it's just a bit of business we've got going here. You know how it is. Yeah. Don't mind if I make myself a cup of tea while I'm here, though, do you? You know, in my flat. Some other time, innit? One with a bit more privately. And go. Hey, be a mate, will ya? Oh, yeah. And let you and Big Vern in there push me out of my own gaff. Sinbad, we've got work to do, right? Just like you have. Oh, so you're gonna take his side against mine? I've asked you nicely. Go and clean some windows. Uh, 
this to a nation of shopkeepers, then? Hey, hang on, Charlie. I'm not so sure I want to drink to the opposition. Ah, you'll see them after all. Yeah. What sort of things are you planning to sell, then? Well, I say we ought to stock a bit of everything. But Dee Dee said we should only carry nearly everything. Still, can't wait, though, mate. Here's to it, then. Oh. Wallaby member. Bit of a treasure for your mic. I don't know if it's the sort of racket he likes, but... Oh, no, no, that'll be great, that, Charlie. Thanks a lot, mate. Maria was going to take it round the Aussie tonight for him, but she had to go out somewhere else. You know, some maze of hers needed her to go round at the last minute. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll see Dee Dee gives it into him tonight. Good lady, your Dee Dee. Dead straight. Quite my Maria. Yeah. How do I look? Marvellous. It's a pity they didn't see you before the cast Godfather prior today, isn't it? Mm, very funny. You're going for the world's record of keeping a cob on, are you? Look, it was business, that's all. Vinny is a pro. He just doesn't like to take chances, OK? Mm. And uh, it's Vinny you're going out with tonight, is he? Yeah, it is. There's someone he wants me to meet. A business meeting. You're playing right out of your league there. Who am I? Listen, mate. I'm going right to the top of the first division. Walton Jail Reserves, you mean, don't you? Mind you, they've got a nice kit. Bite me little arrows on it. You could worry for England. Do you know that if you put your mind to it? Oh, yeah, and I've got nothing to worry about, have I? Just because I shared a flat with a divvy who thinks he can rob his way to the stars. And he uses my flat for the stash. And he has no marks like that greasy Geordie treating me like he owns the place. What is it you want, eh? What's it take, hmm? Do you want more rent? Just have what it is. Or well, behave yourself. No, I don't want more rent. I don't want more rent, no. Well, what is it, then? It's you, isn't it? You. Acted like a lunatic. So what is it you're saying? Hmm? What do you mean? What am I saying? Well, what is it you're saying? Do you want me to go? Do you want me to move out? Is that what you're saying? No, no, I don't want you to move out. No, I don't. It's just that I... Well, it's like... It's like all this robbing. It's like... It, it's got you on some sort of a high, like a fit. It's like you're on drugs or something. And you want to know why? Hmm? Because I can't lose. For once in my life, I'm on a roll. The other day, I knew. Do you know that? I just knew we couldn't go wrong. And do you want to know why? Hmm? Well, I'll tell you. Because I've cracked it. And all this time, it was dead simple. If you think you're a loser, then you're a... All it takes is to think you're a winner. That's it. That's the knack. And now I've sussed it. I'm telling you. I can't go wrong. Oh, you don't have to be scared of him, love. He's as gentle as a lamb, this one. Erm, um, wouldn't happen to know of my mate Rod's own, would you? Rod Corkill. He said I'd call if I was passing, but... No, well, come to think of it, I didn't see his car there. Shame that. Come on this way as well. I did see Diana, though, Rod's girlfriend. She might still be there. Oh, that's good. We're going to see Diana then, eh? Cheers, love. Hiya. Hi. Oh, if it was the ice cream man you were after, I think you've just missed him. Oh, or maybe it's just as well. Did you miss him? Well, I had to go to the chemist, actually, get something for Danny. Well, I bet you're glad to see the back of that great wall. I'm happy, but Ron is ecstatic. He thinks Max Farnham gave in first and took it down. Well, I just assumed that Ron had. So does Max Farnham, but the truth is, neither of them did. Well, so who? Margaret. And I suspect my brother, because he's been acting a bit strange recently. Oh, well, good for them. Uh, both Max and uh, Ron are happy thinking each other did it, so... Uh... Oh, right, I don't... I won't say a word, don't worry. <laughs> Right, two male egos left intact and all achieved by a mere woman, eh? Oh, well, has it been any different? <laughs> Better get back to Danny. Uh, hell, he's not poorly or anything, is he? No, well, well, between you and me, um, we found something in his hair. It's a bit embarrassing, really. It's just as well not easily embarrassed. Oh, mine at some time, rather, since he's been at school, I've had him. Yeah, well, I know it's nothing to be ashamed of. And I know lice like clean hair and everything. It's just Terry's dad pointed them out to Terry when he picked up Danny. And... You tell Terry it can happen to the bestest, cleanest mum in the world. Oh, I suppose so. I just love to know where he got them from. Well, like I say, it can happen in the best run households. I'll see you then. Yeah. See ya. Oh, by the way, thanks for the information about Barry. Um, Ron's getting the shop. Oh, that's great. But make sure you get it all in writing. Oh, yeah, I know he's a mate of yours, but uh, he's a bit dodgy, isn't he? I've met types like that before. <laughs> See ya. Bye. 
Ooh, there you are, clean as a whistle. Honest. Honest. Kill anything, Nasta. Ten minutes telly, and that's all. Oh, have we got time for a quick coffee before we wash this stuff off? Yeah, ten minutes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you leave enough for Nick to put on his? Oh, plenty. But um, there's not enough to go round again, though. You shouldn't need to. You and me only for grocery, anyway. Yeah, but it might only look like you've gotten rid of Leo and Gemma's. But you heard what the chemist said about this new super strain sometimes being immune and that. You believe anything, you. He's only trying to flog us another bottle. Come on. Super knit. Could they fight it or would it conquer the earth? Now showing at a lyceum near you. Mm. Oh, I've never liked the thoughts of it, though, have you? Mm. I know you don't have to be dear, so you're not. Yeah, I thought little things crawling all over you. Still, I suppose there's worse creatures. You should know, be now, with most of them. I wish I knew where they picked them up. I think it's a school or one of the kids at the party. Could be either. Just my luck, eh? They don't do food. How about before I came out? Yeah, well, I would have as well. Just Maria had to go out. A friend of hers isn't too well. The, uh, seem pretty certain our Mike will be out of Aussie next week. That's great, though. Yeah. It's not been a bad week all around for you, then, has it? What with that yuppie neighbour of yours taking the wall down? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Charlie. I'm gonna nearly settle for down on its own. Telling the truth, mate, I got browned off looking at that fence myself. I wasn't gonna give him the satisfaction of me taking it down. Still, man will only eat weekend first and do it for me. And then your DD goes and cracks you getting the shelf. Mm. Topped a lot there. Amazing woman, DD. Where would we be without the mate? It's the same with my Maria. I mean, last night she's out with your Didi to help her take her mind off your mic being in the Aussie. And tonight, where is she? She could have been putting her feet up, but no, her mate's under the weather. So off she goes. Oh. Uh, you didn't take Kelly's heroes by any chance, did you, Charles? Just that the kids recorded over mine. Ah, sorry, Ron. It's a great film, that. But, I mean, nothing's too much trouble for her, you know, Maria. And I'm not always a lot of help to her, though, I say it myself. She's dead good out, and half the time all I do is take advantage. Trouble as you do, though, don't you, when they're as good out as she is? Come on, Charlie, you're good to her, too. Ain't not half as good as she is to me, mate. Still, one thing I am good at, and that's knowing when I'm lucky. Do you fancy another, then? No, uh, no thanks, mate. It's been a big week, you know. Hiya, Rosin, is he? Uh, no, he's out. Shame, though. Thought he'd be in. Well, I'm sorry, he's not here. I'm scared of him, are you? He's just a pensioner, this one, aren't you, Ray? Eh? Once you get you a guard, so I'll give you leaves you in there on your own. Well, I don't really like. I mean, Rod doesn't leave me, except like tonight when he's on duty. But he'll probably be back soon. Thought he was on duty. <sighs> yeah, well, whenever you do see him, tell him I called, eh? Yeah, all right, fine. Hang on, hang on. How are you going to tell him who it is? And you don't even know who I am? Oh, yeah, stupid. Sorry, mister. Just tell him Arthur. He'll know you mean. Tell him Arthur and his dad are back in circulation. You got it? Arthur and his dog, dad are back in circulation. And I'll see him another time. OK. You don't have to be scared of him, you know. Quiet as a lamb, unless I say, see him off. She's boy. All right. See you another time tonight. forget you have to leave this on for a bit to eradicate the possibility of further infestation. Ooh. I don't see why everyone makes such a fuss about nips. There's thousands of parasites live on man, you know. Like my ex-wife, you mean? No, really, I watched a film about it. There's millions of little creatures live under your eyelashes and in your fingernails and your bed's meant to be full of them. Margaret! No, seriously. I mean, you have a bath and you think you're clean and really your skin's crawling with millions of little bugs that are feeding on it. Yes, well, thank you very much for sharing that with me. Yeah, well, if you don't want any more little lodgers, you best slap some of this on. <sighs> Do I have to, really? Well, it's best safe than sorry, unless you want to get nets. All right, on one condition. You tell Patricia about the head lice. Max, I told you, it's nothing to be ashamed of. I know that. You know that. For all I know, people might keep them as pets. But the question is... When Patricia finds out that the dreaded louse has dared invade the silken tresses of her firstborn, will she know that? Yeah, well, on the whole, I think it's the best coming from you.
Thanks, Margaret. And what are you doing here? I thought you were out with Loverboy tonight. Yeah, I'm not seeing him till half eight. So I thought I'd nip in and show you exactly what I intended knocking his eyes out with tonight. And what have you told Charlie? Oh, you haven't said you're seeing me again, have you? No. A sick friend. And my friend's not sick at all. In fact, he's just about as fit as they come. <laughs> and what happens if Charlie comes back here with Ron? No, he won't. Anyway, I'll be gone in a minute. He's taking me to that new theme pub. Oh, yeah. That's supposed to be quite good, that. Yeah, but he likes something different. It must be why he likes you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I like him. And he makes me laugh. Hiya, Ron. You're having a good laugh now, aren't you? Well, you would do, wouldn't you? Not like having a good laugh behind your fella's back, is there? Oh, Ron. Well, I've just left that fella, your husband, listening to him while all he went on about how great you are and how he doesn't deserve you. Well, he was right there, wasn't he? No one deserves a cheating cow like you. Now, listen here, you. No, you listen, Maria. Charlie's my mate, my best mate. And tonight was like watching him crucify himself at every nice thing he said about you. And all the time you're out making a tar to yourself at some fancy... I've had enough. Yeah, well, so have I. And I'll tell you something else as well. If you haven't got the sense to see when you're well off and stop all this messing about of yours, then I'm going to. Didi, you can't go letting him tell Charlie. Ron, you can't. Well, can't I? You just watch me. Ron, I know you're upset, but you don't really mean you're going to tell Charlie. Ron! Double dating and double dealing in love in Change of Heart in just a moment. Mr. Rogers? Yeah? I have to give Thomas his last hair treatment tonight. My head feels itchy and I didn't even have the next. Mm, you hope. Well, if I did have, they'll be gone by now. I've just done my hair. You have? Yeah. Says in the bottle, treat all members of the family. I thought you and Max might have had a go. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, I mean, I checked my hair through thoroughly. Well, it might not be enough. I mean, they might have laid the eggs and they'll be just getting ready to Ooh. hatch. <laughs> no, well, maybe you're right. I just don't want anyone at work to find out, and that stuff's so strong. Somebody's bound to ask what the smell is. Well, it doesn't last that long. It's too much fuss made, if you ask me. I mean, we all had them when we were kids more than once. Oh, don't let Max hear that confession. You'll be packed straight off back to Oldham. It's far too much fuss. Anyone can get them. It's just the thought of things crawling around on Thomas's head. I just feel a bit embarrassed. Yeah, I know anyone would. I remember the last time we had them. My mum sent me to the chemist to get a bottle of lotion, only asked me not to tell the chemist what it was for. Hmm, why do you think I asked you to get it? Anyway, what if I saw somebody I knew? Oh, no. What? Well, 
I asked Ron if he had any in the mobile. I said it was for you. You didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think they came from? Oh, I don't know. They might have picked them up from the Johnson's birthday party from one of the kids. Maybe even from Mick and Joyce's own kids. Mm, how are you going to find out? Might do a bit of diplomatic asking about. <laughs> and what if Joyce is there? Well, I'm not going to accuse her directly. I'm just going to broach the subject diplomatically. Well, rather you than me. <laughs> Thanks for being with me, Thank you. Bye-bye. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you don't me down! You made this show of me? Hey, hey, Frank. Won the Aussie Pools, have you? Better than that, Mick. <laughs> What's in bad cleaning the windows properly? This bit of news is mega, mate. Wait, Dad. Oh, come on, then, Frank. Well, what is it? I can't. It's a surprise. Will you just tell us? I can't. Well, who's it to do with, then? Beardy, beardy, in the rubble. Beaky, little beaky, that's your trouble. I'm going over to Margaret. If he gets any ways, call an ambulance. I can get one. Make a maid up. Now, listen here, Frank. You know you can tell your favourite neighbour. I ah, know. This bit of news for our Jeff, and it's got to come straight from me. Ah, so it's to do with your Jeff, then, is it? I'm saying not until I see me solicitor. Oh, come on, Frank. I've got 19 more questions to go. Mick, I'd love to tell you. Later, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell Charlie about Maria having an affair or not? I went up there. Made sure Maria and the kids were out of the way, you know. I went up the path, dead confident. All right, Charlie, I'm your best mate, aren't I? I'm going to tell you what's going on behind your back, pal. And he opened the door. And I was great big stupid face grinning at you. And I thought, can I really destroy this fella? I mean, how the hell do you tell your best mate that his missus is playing away from home? Well, I'm glad you didn't. Are you? Glad for who? Glad for us. But I'm glad for Maria and Charlie. Well, I'm glad for no one. I'll tell you something else. Maria's not coming round here until all this is sorted out. She's my best friend. I don't care. She's still not coming round. I can't do that. Can't I? I'm doing it. So you can't give Charlie bad news, but I've got to give Maria bad news. Now, don't be twisting I things. I thought you had backbone. I have. But look what's happening to us, look. We're at each other's throats. Well, we can't shut out things we don't agree with, Ron. Look, Dee, I'll handle anything that comes at me from my own family, all right? But this... They're our friends. They both might need us soon. Yeah. Well, I'll stick by Charlie, and I'll stick by you through anything. But I'm not helping out Maria until she sees sense. <sighs> Wasn't sure you'd be in. Well, I was at a trial, and it finished early. Prosecution's chief witness didn't turn up. Oh, thanks. Didn't realise you had to attend court. Oh, it's all part of it. Lots to do and lots to learn. Mm. What about your mission statement? My what? Oh, where I'll be in 50 years' time. Mm, five will do. Still working on it. I remember when you went for the interview for that job. I remember we stood on the corner waiting for a cab. You were so nervous. I still get unsure about things, lots. Mm. Um, I was wondering, since you know uh, Josie a bit better than I do, it was a bit embarrassing, but um, Thomas has got head lice. Oh, Danny had them as well. Oh, thank God for that. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, but I thought it was just us. Terry's dad discovered them. He wanted to send out for the emergency knit nurse there and then. How can you be so jokey about it? Well, I had them myself when I was a kid. Yeah, but you know some head lice are resistant to treatment now. And Danny's have all gone. Why don't you bother where he got them from? I just presumed he'd pick them up from some kids in the park. Terry's dad takes them there. Yeah, but Thomas doesn't play with other children yet. And it does seem a bit of a coincidence that they both went to the Johnson's party and they've both got head lice. Mm, I hadn't thought about that. I mean, I know it's not exactly the plague or anything, but I thought I might just mention it to Josie. You know, more as a way of alerting them, really. I mean, I'm sure if their kids were the source, they'd want to know. It is a bit of a touchy subject, though. Yeah, but I'm sure I could handle it tactfully. Josie's in. You might need a little bit more than tact. Mm. It's been dead weird going back home after all that. You're not kidding, back home with me tail between my legs. It's been like getting divorced. Do you want a drink? Yeah. But the hardest thing, though, was trying to convince me dad that I've changed. How do you mean? Well, he still thinks I'm his little girl. Do you feel different? Totally. I mean, I feel more like a woman now. Both, that's what I mean. Dad just can't handle it. What do you say when you see Tim? He's gone. Moved to hotels. <laughs> Couldn't bear to be in the same building as me in the end. I'd have done anything for him, you know, but I ruined it. I tried to switch off and pretend I wasn't hurt, but I am. 
I'll be crying in a minute. And now I've nearly split up the whole family. I mean, my mum and dad have been at each other's throat over it. Hey, should we go out tonight? We've got time or something. Oh, I couldn't. Oh, come on. We'll cop off. Stacey, you cop off. <laughs> Lenny scouts all the time. <laughs> oh, come on, it's my night off. Oh, all right then. But no more fellas. I've had enough of them. No, we'll just have a good drink. You can drown your sorrows. A drink? Yeah. Hello. All right. I hate doing this garden, you know, but Josie likes the look of all these flowers. Mm, nice. Um, is she in? No, she's taking the kids to the pictures. Oh, right. Can I help? Um, no, I think it should be Josie. I hope you're not getting sexist, you know. I am a man of the 90s. I garden, I cook, I iron. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a bit embarrassing. Oh, it's to do with women and that. Uh, I didn't mean to pry. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, Max and I, um... Thomas. He's got head lice. <laughs> head lice? Yes. Can't give a good knit down, eh? Our Leo's just had them. Ah, that's what I wanted to talk about. How do you mean? Well, Max and I, we were, um, just wondering where they came from. Oh, yeah? And Thomas has never had head lice before, and... We were just concerned. What you mean is that uh, he never had them before he came here? Oh, I, I wouldn't put it like that. How would you put it then? I'm not making a very good job of this, am I? No, you're not. You know, you may go away from here and think I've got a big chip on my shoulder, but uh, I think I can explain things here. Now, we get a plague of knits, sorry, head lice on the close. And some of the kids get together and have a party, and some of them get the head lice. And you want to know where they came from? Look. So you look around the close for the most likely source of this plague, and bingo, there it is. There's a black family living there. And we'll do. You know, you of all people surprise me. Out of anyone on this close, I'd have laid money on you being right on. I suppose that says more about how gullible I am. Thinking that all well paid, good looking white people aren't racist. Beast one man. Start up a one two. He's got on the shirt. Oh, he's got the shirt. Oh, there's gold. Right, you swell. Thought you had Jeff then. Yeah, well, I'm glad I'm so popular. Oh, you're enough. Who'd have thought today? Dad, what is it? Beaky, beaky. <laughs> got to tell him first. Yeah, well, if it's that good, I'll celebrate for him tonight. You want out tonight? Yeah, with Margaret. Well, wow, let's pick up the pieces. Listen, Sam. I know we've had a bit of a hard time lately, but... Dad, it's OK. Yeah, I know, but I mean... When you were little, I used to call you my little princess. Dad, I appreciate what you're trying to say and what you're trying to do, but I'm not a little girl anymore, you know. Yeah, I know, love, I know. But I just don't want you getting hurt. I'll be all right. Yeah. Three times already. Oh, I didn't get to bed till three o'clock this afternoon. Why? Because when I got home from work, I decided to do things around the house. You gonna get something to eat? No, I'll get a shower. I'm not going out in the cab till later. Well, I'll get a shower first. Danny's still asleep. Okay. Terry. Oh. I do love you, you know. You must do. Putting up with me and all my narcs. It's 50 50. It's you all over, isn't it? Sharing the blame. I wouldn't do it if I didn't love you. Feelings mutual. <laughs> you say it, though. Say that you love me. I do. I really love you. It won't be long. All right, son. What's wrong? Well, nothing. In fact, everything's just right. 
I've got a bit of news for you. What? Well, he just come in here. And he sits there. I told you he was a tax man or a cop or something. Then he just comes out with it. Dead business like. Then he gives me the bit of news that might change your life. What are you talking about? The man from Torquay says, yeah. Torquay? Torquay United, the football team, the football club. They want your son. They want my son to play professional football. They had a YTS place to fill. They get in touch with Sammy. They gave them all your details, and he wants to see us tonight at an hotel in town. It's just not a wind-up, is it? I mean, you're not going to bring Jeremy Beadle out, are you? On my father's grave. What, do you want me? Talk, you want me? Oh, yes! I never lost faith in you, son. All right. Oh, Tracy will be off on a cruise now. Even though it's work, right? I bet you'll be having a cracking time. Yeah. Have you nearly finished? Yeah. You all right? You seem quiet tonight. Is it me? You fed up with me? No, it's not like that. What, then? Come on. It's your job. It just frightens me, that's all. Well, it frightens me sometimes. Yeah, but I worry about you. I don't want anyone hating you. Most of the stuff we do, it's not dangerous. It's only every now and again that I get into lumber. I mean, some bobbies will find trouble anywhere. But me... Well, what happens if someone comes after you? You what? Has something happened? Well, this fella came round here last week. A fella? Yeah, and his dog. He said his name was Arthur something or other. That divvy. You do know him? Yeah. Remember when we'd done the bust on the dog fighting when I first started going out with you? Well, we nicked him, didn't we? Well, I didn't like him. And his dog terrified me. He said he was a friend of yours. He's a no mark. He's just trying to wind me up. And what if he does something? We get threats all the time, but most of it's all talk. Well, you got attacked in the pub because you were a policeman, didn't you? That was a one off. Look. If I listened to every threat I ever got, right, I'd never sleep. I mean, I nick someone and they say, I'll get you, copper. But this Arthur fella, he's... Don't worry about Arthur and his dog. He's just a no-mark. He's just trying to wind me up. And if he does anything right, I'll nick him. He's done his little bit and he won't be back. Chalky! 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 Oh, some club one, Jeff. What for? Football love. It's a first for this family. Congratulations. We'll get the ball out after. And listen, I've got two massive stakes on the go. Gonna have to start building you up again. Talk you. I'll have to leave home like, won't I? Well, I know that, son. But it's a brilliant opportunity. Now listen, lots of lads starting on league, you know. I mean, look at Stevie Highway. He's with Skimmers Dale United when Liverpool picked him up. But you're starting with a good league team, with a good history, and it's just what you wanted, son. But I told you, Mum, everything will be all right, didn't I? Steaks, right now. <laughs> Terry, your drink will be stone cold. OK. The bathroom's free. You look good. Mind you, I haven't looked at you properly for ages, have I? Well, it's nice to be appreciated. In fact, it's nice to be in the same room as you for more than a few minutes. We're like ships that pass in the night. I know, yeah. And when we are alone, Barry always pops up, doesn't he? Don't talk about Barry. Oh, he hasn't been winding you up, has he? No, I try to do my best to keep out of his way. Oh, come on. Well, since I had that little talk to him, things are all right between you two, aren't they? Yeah, I suppose so. I get really confused about us, you know. Wondering if we made a big mistake staying together. Well, that's my fault, isn't it? I don't always know if you still want me. I do. You know what I'm like. I suppose I just need to hear you say it, that's all. You're not that sort of fella. Well, you were when we were courting. You tell me every opportunity that you could that you loved me. Flowers, romantic dinners. You made me really want you. I want you. It's just that... Oh, I'm just stubborn. 
You're not the only one. I can be pig-headed when I want. You turn me inside out when you cold shoulder me. Yeah, I don't know. I can see what it's doing to you. It's just... Well, my pride stops me from making things easier by saying sorry. What love means never... Never having to say you're sorry. <laughs> Where have I heard that before? It is you I want, Terry. I don't want to be with anybody else. I don't want to be without you. I want you as well. Mm. Wait, Danny. No, we won't. I asked for a fruit and juice. Oh, and you're only in once. <laughs> You can knock them back, can't you? Oh, old habits die hard. Old habits? I thought you didn't drink. I used to, lot. I just have a good drink now and again. Well, I hope I don't have to end up carrying you home. Oh, and I thought you were looking for some Prince Charming to carry you out. You don't exist. <laughs> and now I've finished with fellas, too. I mean, they're not worth the trouble, are they? I was bringing you out to cup off. Nah, you can. I mean, there's loads of nice hunks in here. Well, I mean, you might as well. You've got no one else except baby Thomas Vaughan. Now, leave Thomas out of this. Yeah, but you haven't got anyone, have you? <laughs> not really. <laughs> what do you mean, not really? You've got someone on the quiet, haven't you? <laughs> no, I'm heck. I can tell. You've been hit by Cupid's little arrow. Sammy! Right through your little old and heart. Well, I'm going to get the drinks in while you think I'm Mr. Mystery. I don't want another one, and you've had enough. <laughs> Not too bad, that. Not too bad. Oh, listen. I'll throw a few over and practice trapping them. Now, this one's going to be another high one. Just take it easy. What, me? I can pinpoint them anywhere, can I? Scalacci. Estos. Do it, then. Go there on. we go. Oh, sorry, Terry. I didn't mean to, uh... Hey, somebody could have got it, you know? It's dangerous. I just sliced it. Um, I'll get it fixed for you. Didn't mean to disturb you. Eh, uh, you're all right, um... I'll sort you out tomorrow, then. All right. Get the ball. What was it? Bloke over the road put a ball through Terry's window. Not exciting, then? No. Didn't you get fed up having to be a policeman on and off duty? I don't think about it anymore. I suppose some things get to you more than others, whether you're on or off duty, like. Like what? Traffic accidents. Most of them are pretty straightforward, you know. You get a call to go to one and you've got time to prepare yourself, like, you know. You start imagining all sorts, though, hoping it's not going to be that bad. Oh, I couldn't do it. It's always worse when you're on the scene in minutes. No time to prepare. One time I got there, middle of town. Some motorcyclists had been hit by an Arctic. You're not supposed to move the head, you know, in case they've got a neck injury. But he was gagging, and I could see something in his eyes. He was crying. So, I took his helmet off, and as I did, his brains and his skull just fell on my hands. I think he's dead brave. I've never told anyone that before. Why don't you just leave? You could get another job. I've thought about it a couple of times. Every Bobby does. Every job has its highs and lows, though. And funny enough, attending traffic accidents might get here every now and again, but they aren't always the lows. Well, well, for me, it's like taking a statement off an old woman who's been belted in the mouth and had a pension robbed off her. And she's so grateful for me being there. And she asked me, will I catch them? And I say, we'll do our best, love. Knowing full well that was short of Bobby's because someone won't come up with the cash. Pack it in. 
Collins. Still enjoy the job. If we're gonna stay together, you're gonna have to accept that I'm gonna be a policeman. It's my job, and I'm sticking with it. Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, I used to go out with him. Oh, yeah? Oh, he's with a nice girl. <laughs> Wait till he sees me. Sammy's with someone. So, I can have him back any time I want. Don't be deaf. Come on, let's go get something to eat. He's mad about me. Send me a valentine. Sammy, don't do anything stupid. <laughs> I'm just getting me drink. Well, yeah, I get mine while you're there, uh, mate. Hey, you look great. And you look drunk. Come on, Sammy, let's go. And who's this? Oh, some girl I used to know. She's just going, aren't you? Good. Oh, and who's this? Uh, this is Grace. <laughs> oh, what Grace? So you're ignorant as well as drunk, are you? Hey, girl, you know nothing about us. I mean, we go back years, don't we, Alan? Look, I'm being really polite here. We've been together for three months now. We're dead happy, and I doesn't want nothing to do with you. Sorry! Hey, get off, will you? Pack it in! Come on, Grace. Let's get off. We go somewhere where they keep the riffraff out. Owen! Yeah. Oh, shut it! <laughs> Trade in their old loves for newer, bigger, better models? Find out in Change of Heart next. Drunk. They were all still in bed. You weren't half knocking them back, though. Don't mind now. Took to it like a duck to water, I'd say. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, I used to have a problem with drinking. But a real problem. Oh, I had no idea. I thought you were just letting yourself go after Tim. I was. I must have got the taste for it again. Were you like a proper alcoholic? 100%. I was 16 and I needed a drink to get the day off to a reasonable start. Oh, God. Some of my mates in Oldham were into drinking, but nothing like that. What did your parents say? Well, Owen helped me through it in a way. Don't know what you've got till it's gone, eh? Ma, have you got a Mars bar? Loads, but you're not having one. How oh, come, Ed? Ma, who's your favourite son? You're my favourite son called Trouble and you're still not having one. Will you have an apple? You need vitamins while you're convalescing. What's up with me dad, anyway? Oh, we had an upset. What about? Never mind. Oh, come on. I thought there was going to be no more secrets in this family. It's a convenient rule. Parents give to their kids. Exploitation of children unable to defend themselves from a dominant matriarchal figure. You exploited with a gob like that? You must have passed on the gene, man. <laughs> What's all this ma business? Well, I'm just trying to figure out a way of telling me favourite ma that you were right about getting the A-levels, going to poly and doing the band. Oh, good. I'm glad you've seen sense, Mike. Well, I'll give it some thought and I reckon I can crack the two. Gee, you bet Ron, our son seems sense at last. Oh, Grace, when's he leaving home? That's nice, isn't it? I'm going to help pay me way through college and my half fella's giving me a stick. Hey, hey, listen to the half fella business. 
Mind you, I do like the sound of this mature attitude to his education, like. Look, don't get carried away. You haven't run into Polly yet, and you didn't exactly have your nose to the grindstone. I'll be all right. Oh, I hope so, Mike. Anyway, I'm going to get a bath somehow. Hey, not before time, either. You know when you were in an hospital, I had to move a couple of pigs in because I missed the smell. That's it. I'm phoning Charles, like. <laughs> Yo, Derek's just been on the phone, though. The Pope's giving me a day off work. Is he coming over? Yeah, I don't know if he's winding me up or not, but he said he's going to bring some holy water over to bless the shop. Oh, I just feel so ashamed of what I did in the club. I mean, no wonder Owen doesn't speak to me again. Mm. It might not be as bad as that. Oh, I, yeah. Would you like someone who came up to you and breathed alcohol all over you and then wants to give you the big sloppy kiss? <laughs> Makes a change, though, doesn't it? I mean, that's what happens to most girls every Saturday night. Lads coming up, stinking a lager, thinking they can turn you on. <laughs> Smart, Alan. No, if I could just get him on his own. On his own? No, seriously. I mean, if I could just get him for half an hour, ten minutes even, I could... Oh, I'm sure I could just apologise and I could talk to him and tell him what a fool I was. I thought you were finished with lads. Some things aren't meant to be, you know, Sammy. You can't always have the man you want for whatever reason. I might catch him at college on Friday. I'd just forget it. No, I mean, I've blocked him out now. I really don't think me and Owen should have ever split up. I wonder if you want to try again. Sammy, look, I'm not trying to be negative, but I really can't see him ever wanting to speak to you again after what happened. I mean, I'd just forget him. You've got no chance. I've got every chance. All right, he mightn't pick up the phone when I call him. But I know he's going to be in college on Friday and I'm going to be there to meet him. You see, I'm going to get Owen back again. Right, ready when you are. Is this a bit for the window cleaner, then, or what? Well, I thought I'd open negotiations. How much? Well, I haven't seen him yet, have I? Might be going out to tender, you know. Oh, all right. Well, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do a glazing survey when I come round later on. Listen, um, what kind of stuff are you going to be selling in the shop? All kinds, why? Well, uh, I might be able to lay my hands on a bit of fresh produce. Oh, all right. What sort? Fowl and fish. Yeah, but what type? Well, you know, uh, fowl and fish. I know a fowl and fish are, Simba, but what do you mean? Chickens, turkeys, sausages, penguins, what? Eh, uh, well, chicken and trout. Caught and delivered the same day from the chicken coop to the chopping block. A fresh, eh? They're uh, all above board, like. Oh, come on, Mum. Doesn't half hurt me, you know, when you say things like that. Listen, as a matter of fact, if you wanted to start flogging the stuff before you got the shop going, you could do it in the mobile, couldn't you? That way you could build up a discerning clientele. That sounds all right to me. Tell you what, you deliver, I'll buy. Sold to that man in the black wig. Talkway United? Yeah. The Talkway? Ice creams and palm trees and scantily clad 17-year-olds. Oh, I, yeah. That Talkway. Tommy put them onto you. Well, they had a place left on YTS, yes, and I'm the man. <laughs> well, boy, we had to fill me with red steak now. I told you, watch the arseys, not too much red meat. I still can't believe it, you know. I made up for you, mate. See, I never lost faith in you, I knew you'd get there. Oh, what did I say? The club have got a board now for me. Landlady's got a queue for all my meals and that. I'll be like home from home. Weird about landladies, mate. I was reading this magazine, right? Oh, why? Which magazine is this, eh? The sort you're gonna be reading on your lonely nights and talking. Anyway, listen, this this letter like it was entitled Lashed by a Landlady. Oh, Don, I don't want to hear about it. Thanks. You regret not listening to me, mate, when you're too tired to train on the beach. I stay at school, eh? Yeah. Be glad to see the back of the place. Well, I might have a couple of teachers on me good news. Oh, I'm doing this. Oh yeah, it's one of them. What's up? Who am I going to hang around with now? You find someone. And what's the love of your life got to say about you going away? Paula? I haven't told you yet. She, she would need up for me, won't she? All right? Hiya. Is your dad in? I need some eggs. Uh, you know what Lady Farnham would say about you buying stuff from the Moby now? Well, she's not here, is she? No, nah, neither is my dad. He's gone round to the new shops. Enjoying yourself? Yeah, made by the best minds, for the best minds. Oh, what are you doing with it, then? Uh-huh. Anyway, how are you feeling? Ah, my ribs are still a bit sore, like, but um, I've got more important things on my mind. A-levels are coming out soon. Oh, well. Keep my fingers crossed for you. Yeah. Um, do you know what time I'll be back? I couldn't tell you. I mean, he's gone round there. He's meeting me Uncle Derek or something. Father Derek? Well, you can call him Father. I call him Uncle. OK. See ya. You're a bit interested in your Uncle Derek, aren't you? So 
what's happened to Terry's urge for a baby, then? Well, we've sort of called a truce on baby talk for the moment, but we can be getting on great. And then if the subject of babies crops up, we're off fire and water. Right, but apart from that, you're back to lovey-dovey status with Terry, yeah? Mm. Still keeping Barry dangling on a string. Fran, come on, tell us more about the juicy Barry. Well, has something happened? Something has happened, I can tell by your face. Oh, come on, Sue, there's nothing going on in my life. At least let's have a bit of your gossip. Well, he sort of cornered me the other week, and he kissed me. And did you kiss him back? No, I did not. I knew he fancied you. Well, I certainly don't fancy him. Are you sure? Positive. Terry's the only man in my life. Yeah, it's got great potential. How would you know you're the Catholic? Oh, we did all right with the Sistine Chapel. Is that that pub down by the docks? Have you got that? All right, but well, I wasn't built in the day. Hey, I hope you're not taking the name of our HQ in vain. Now, would I do a thing like that? Nah, I think it'll look great. When did you move in? Well, there's no fixed date yet. The sooner the better for me, though. Uh, you're supposed to keep hold of this while I do it, you know. You know, it'll make a change in the movie. Uh, what are you going to do with the movie? I was thinking we could possibly convert it into a sort of bus for the prisoners. And I'm still thinking about using it. Just haven't sorted out yet. Hiya. Hiya. All right, Mum. What are you for? Um, I went on to yours just to make sure my exit were around here. What do you reckon, then? Hello. Hiya. We should be good, shouldn't it? Oh, yeah, we just agreed that. Uh, uh, hopefully it'll be a bit of a gold mine. Not that uh, Ron's interested in making money, more of a case of uh, providing a community service. Uh, that's me. No more Ron the Con. From now on, I'm as honest as a drunken bishop. <laughs> what do you want, eggs? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take these. Tell our Michael to get on his backside and get in about the movie. OK, then. Look, uh, I'll go back and put the kettle on, if you like. Yeah, we'll be finished soon. All right, then. Yeah. Right, I'll see you later, then. Yep. Bye, Bye now. Bye. She can want to see him, you know. What? Margaret. I bet you come over to see your Derek. Oh, don't be at it, Derek. Yeah, your Derek, he's all right for the Catholic. That's the point. He's not only a Catholic, he's a priest. All right, I'm not saying there's anything going on. I'm just making an observation, that's all. Well, don't go making observations to anybody else. There's nothing going on, so don't invent anything. <laughs> so, have you uh, been doing any more wall demolition lately? <laughs> no. Hey, it worked, though. Max thinks Ron swallowed his pride and Ron thinks Max has <laughs> oh, I wish I could have seen the faces. I'm glad you did it. Uh, we? I couldn't have done it. Well, I wouldn't have done it on my own. Well, it was worth it. Max hasn't been half as grumpy. It's made things better all round. Good. I suppose being underhand can have its benefits. It wasn't underhand. It's not bringing people together was meant to be part of your job. Mm. It's a pity most other things in life can't be sorted out so easily. You know, poverty, starvation. Oh, I like you mean. I was watching it on the telly the other night about all those kids dying in the zoo down. Makes you feel so lucky. Mm. Yeah, we're, uh, we're holding a jungle sale soon for them. Oh, great. You, uh, you wouldn't mind helping out, would you? Yeah. Grace, we're always looking out for a spare pair of hands, and, uh, well, we made a pretty good tune the other night. And it purely is good friends. <laughs> I know exactly what you meant. I tell you, Dee, I've got all my feelings bottled up inside and I'm getting more and more frustrated. Don't I know it? Yeah, but I didn't tell Charlie about Maria's affair, love, and it's really made me feel bad. Well, it not sort itself out, Ron. Yeah, but when? I mean, how long do we have to keep this flaming charade up for? You know that stuff you said the other day about men sticking together and women sticking together? Well, you had a point. But what about men and wife sticking together? All this is starting to affect us now. But Marie wants to keep things a secret and that's her business. Yeah, but you don't have secrets like that in marriage, do you? It's supposed to be up front, everything on the table. We have to have secrets. I mean, we have to hold on to something. Oh, you've been reading too many women's magazines. I hate you when you say things like that. All I'm saying is that we shouldn't have secrets, that's all. So closed off to so much, Ron. What are you on about? But we ha we all have secrets. You have, I have them. Oh, I. What's yours like? Have you been buying some new sexy underwear or what? Oh, just leave it out. All right, Dee, come on. Don't just stand there. Let's hear it. Come on, you had loads to say about Charlie and Maria. Let's hear about you. Dee Dee. 
Do you, what is it you want to tell me? It's something big, isn't it? Hey? Well, that's why I had to help Maria with her affair. Why? Because well, we made a promise years ago, and she knows. She knows about me. I don't want to hear any more. But, Mother, I want to tell you. But I don't want to know, dear, OK? I couldn't stand it. But it's not what you think, Ron. Dee Dee, I love you, and I want to be with you, and that's enough for me, OK? I don't want to know your secrets. Ron! Dee Dee, I don't want to know. Don't you understand? Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Never <laughs> out of guesses. Just tell me. All right, sit down. Right. I'm going to play football for Torquay United. Honest? Yeah. All oh, made up. But the, the, the fella came up and seen me. He looked nice here. Yeah. Stay in the hotel in town. He seems sad, so. Torquay? Where are you going to stay? It, it's like an hotel. Well, well guest house, but uh, they probably have a bar. So I'm not really allowed to drink. But I'll probably get my own room. We get all these massive meals. And... What about us? I'll be up every weekend. I will. I, I'll write every day. You don't have to. No, I, I want to. You and my girlfriend, we've been going out for, for ages. Five months, two days. Oh, look, I'm really made up for you. Because you're a brilliant footballer and I know it's what you want. Well, you could come down and see me. I mean, it's full of places to stay. Oh, you'll be dead busy, always training. There'll be lots of other girls there. Come on, I don't want to go out with other girls. I don't mind. I think that you should see other girls. Oh, look, they're in the south, anyway. Some ugly ones up here as well, you know. Do you think we should, though? What? Finish. Why? Because you'll be dead busy. It's a holiday place. And you're a footballer. And they're always in the papers with different girls. I, I don't want to go with no one else. Anyway, it's only twice, yes. It's not professional yet. Can we come to ours next week, see Mum and Dad and that before I go? Yeah. Honest. Honest? Look, I've been trying to have a word with you all day. What's up? Uh, well, it's this Maria business. Her and a fancy man. It's been such a strain on Ron and I. Loyalty's been put to the test, are they? Oh, you're not kidding. Ron and I have been talking about truth and secrets. Oh, the big one, eh? You know, you should have told him years ago. I've tried over the years, but I've never even got near it. The longer it goes on, the heavier the burden becomes. Well, I tried this morning at the shop, but he shut me out. He got scared. I stopped. Oh, I don't want to hurt you him, You must Derek. tell him. He's a good man. He'll be fine. Oh, why? Look, I've got to go now. Bye. Don't worry. Nice one. Score. <laughs> what often did you do? Funny. 200 lines? Tetris chat. <laughs> 600 behind me, then. <sighs> Our kid wants it back tonight. Started whittling to me dad about it. Oh, just getting into it, and I have to pack up all those sorts of things when you're in Polly. I thought you'd have to do more. Probably right. Tell you what, mate. Can't wait to go, you know. Oh, it should be good. And with us being in the band, we should do all right for women. Yeah, you'll have all the wacko hippie types after you. Well, I'll have the middle-class beauties who've come up to find the Beatles. Snore time, then, eh? Anyway, I'm not really interested in all that. The Southern Bells looking for a bit of Northern Bluff. <sighs> oh, I. No, I've still got the odds for Tina. She of the silken voice, flashing eyes. And... Yeah, yeah, all that and more, yeah. <sighs> Chill it, mate. Why? Because she comes gift-wrapped with Sinnet. You all right? Yeah, there you go. Oh, Terry's. Cheers. Do you want a cup of tea? Ah, oh, no, thanks, Sue. You've been busy? No, it's really slack out there. And the settle's killing us. We're gonna have to think about going on our own, you know. I suppose everyone's feeling the pinch. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it seems a bit iffy to even think about going on our own, but we can't go in without a fight. How do you think Terry feels about it? 
Well, Terry seems to have got his fight back anyway. Yeah, he was on top of the world when I spoke to him. He must be doing something right, too. Hey, listen, uh, I don't know what it was or what it is between you both, but uh, maybe just going through a bit of what me and Josie go through now and again. Well, every couple of the world over, I think. Yeah, you're right. He's certainly over it, though. Didn't get as bad as the time over Danny, but... Uh... Yeah, I know. Hey, listen, I'd better be going. Oh, by the way, Sue, Patricia Farnham hasn't said anything to you, has she? What about? Well, she was over at ours the other day, making out that the terrible scandal of the net started with our Leo and Gemma. I think she was just trying to find a common place, you know, somewhere where Thomas and Danny could have caught them. What, you or Danny had them as well? Yeah. But I bet she didn't ask if the net stars had here, did she? No. No, just as I thought. Well, that's us finished with her until she apologises anyway. Well, she can only apologise if she's proven wrong, and there's no chance of her finding out where the nits came from. So, won't be the first time we've cold shouldered someone for how they feel about us. See you later. Probably not. How'd you finish with someone? What? Oh. Pack someone in. Is this a wind-up? No, I I'm dead serious. With me going down to Torquay, I was, I was thinking it might be best if I let Paula go so she doesn't have to wait for me. You're not going on an expedition around the world. I mean, it's only down the road. Might as well be a million miles away, then. Are you in love, babe? Quay. Well, look, you don't have to finish with her so that she doesn't have to wait for you. Just let things happen. But but it might be best if, if we called it quits now, before she gets upset, like, and... Before you get upset, you mean? What should I do, then? Well, I don't know. Everyone's different. You packed Owen in. What did you say to him? Just leave it, eh? Why? Because I'm asking you to. I told you, Dee, I don't want to know, I don't need to know. But I need to tell you. All this stuff about Maria and Charlie and secrets, I can't stand it any longer. Flaming Maria. Yeah, Maria. I didn't meet her where I said I did. Well, I did and I didn't. What are you talking about? I always told you that my mum and dad died in a car crash. Well, I believed it myself for a while. But they didn't. I was 17 when my dad died of cancer. And I missed him. Well, we all did. I didn't know you could miss someone so much. Well, I was hurting. But my mum, well, she couldn't face it. She cried every day. And then one night, she filled a bath she locked the bathroom door and she pushed glass into her wrist. She must have been in more pain than my dad was when he died. Dee. We kept it to ourselves, me and Derek, all these years. Derek as well? Well, he was only 12. It was easier for him. He got sent to a Catholic boarding school. But he's a priest. He's been going around lying. No, he hasn't. You believe my story, so I didn't have to. Why a story, Dee? Why not the truth? Because I felt cheated. No more parents. They were gone. And I hated God for that. I hated him. And I couldn't serve him and hate him. So I left. Or well, the convent. I was a novice nun. I was prepared to give my life to the church. And God took me mum and dad away. A novice nun? So I had to go. I left. I was so angry, but I felt free. Free to do just what I wanted and with whom I wanted. And I did. Ron, I was 17 and I felt like some spring had just uncoiled inside me. I don't want to hear anymore. Ron, please listen to no, me. I don't want to know. Ron, I cracked. Get out my way. I was grieving for my mum and dad. I was felt guilty because I hated the church and God so much. And I didn't meet Maria in any hospital. I met her in a psychiatric hospital. She worked there, Ron. Get out Ron. my way. Ron, I was in a psychiatric hospital for 18 months. How could you keep that from me, Dee? How could you? I loved you and I trusted you. 
Because I don't even know you. <laughs> Ron! How could you keep that from me, do you? How? I never even knew you. Couples decide whether they're meant for each other by trying out another mate in Change of Heart, next on Living. Julia. Can I come straight to the point? Oh, what is it? I'm busy. I don't know. Cyril? Yeah. Does it give much away in the way of emotions? What are you saying? Well, this sick sister is in Wolverhampton. He's never mentioned her, but it must be hard going. What are you talking about, Julia? His sick sister, your Ron's auntie. She must have been at your wedding. He hasn't got any relatives in Wolverhampton. Well, not that I know of, but I do know he doesn't have any sisters. He must have. He does not have any sisters, Julia. No. None. Look, I've got to go. No sisters, eh? Tell them to hurry, hurry quick! Quiet! I said be quiet! You get down now! All of you, stop what you're doing now and return to your seats! Are you deaf? I said stop what you're doing and sit down! You! Get down now! <coughs> Have you got a seat? Get down and go and sit in it! You ought to be ashamed of yourselves, all of you! I know it's the last day of school, but it's no excuse for behaving like a pack of wild animals! Are you chewing gum? Take that out now. It's a classroom. It's not the football terraces and it's not a youth club. <coughs> You're third years now, for heaven's sake. Next year, some of you will be asked to be prefects. And as prefects, you'll be expected to set an example to the first years. Well, after what I've seen here today, if I had my way, none of you would be prefects. <coughs> If you carry on like that, young man, I will take you to the headmaster personally. Do you understand me? Yes, miss. Do you? And this is no way to treat another human being. It's just disgraceful. Do you think we get away somewhere for a week? I only meant a car, dear. Oh, I think we'll take a rain check on that one, Joe's. Get rid of our debt slowly but surely. Yeah, and you just watch our landlord Harry Cross put the rent up just as we get clear. No, he wouldn't. Anything's possible with Harry. I always hated about living in flats, putting money down the drain. Well, Patricia was round the other day. Her kids got nits and she wanted to know where they came from. What do you tell me? Well, because we've been doing all right. Because you feel at home here and because you're saying we should buy the house. I might have known she'd be around pointing the finger. Reacting or what? 
Well, I did my ever I got a chip on the shoulder routine, and well, Dennis Sullivan had them as well, and she didn't go over there accusing them. Just I stand to feel a part of it and all. Hey, we're doing all right, Jos. I mean, we haven't had any burning crosses on the lawn. Not yet, anyway. So I would just get on with it and don't expect too much of anybody. All right? Yeah. What are you doing? Quick repair job. When did you get that? It's the one I bought Matthew for Christmas. It's broken, so... Uh... Uh, Susanna phoned me to get it fixed, but I can do it myself. In fact, looks, I've nearly done it. You never it. told me she called? Well, I don't tell you everything. Obviously not. I'm doing this for Matthew. I'm not doing it for my, my ex-wife. I don't care who you're doing it for. I just wish you'd let me know when you were calling around to see her. You make it sound as if I'm there all the time. Well, you do seem to be seeing rather more of her recently. No, no, Susanna phoned me so I could pick this up. I've fixed it, and when I've tested it, I'll be taking it back. I'll be in and out of the house as quickly as possible. On the way, of course, I'll be saying hello to my children. Don't be sarcastic. Oh, I meant all that stuff in London. I said Stuff? Oh, ago. great. We spill our hearts out to each other and you call it stuff. All right. What is it? I really resent her. Not just the fact that she's dependent on you, that's just irritating, but she just won't let go. And yet, at the back of my mind, I know I'm partly responsible for the way things are. Husband stealer. I'm only fixing a car for Matthew, that's all. I only go there to see the children. <laughs> it wouldn't matter to me if I never saw her again. But she's their mother, she's the link between us. <sighs> you know, you've got to stop making comparisons. I don't think she's malicious. I have no, <laughs> she's got problems of her own. I mean, she didn't deliberately get Matthew and Emily to give headlice to Thomas. What? She's not malicious. No, headlice. Oh yeah, uh, Matthew and Emily. They uh, they had headlice before Thomas oh, went to the party. Oh no. Well, it's all right. They've gone now, haven't they? Oh, I can't. I just. I went round to the Johnsons the other day. Practically accused them of running a knit farm. Oh no, you didn't. I did. Mick wasn't very pleased either. Well, he never told me that. I don't tell you everything. Oh, hell, I'm going to have to go around there and apologise when I get back. Why am I such a fool? Oh, leave it. I can't. Oh, I just hope Josie's out at the market or something. She's really going to enjoy this. Perhaps I should wear shin pads. Uh, Ron? Ron? Ma, have you managed to wangle your way into our Billy's house? I got a key of our rod, and before you ask, no, you can't borrow for half an hour. We'll have lots to do. Sure. A pain in the neck, that one. I know we should only let it out on Halloween. Hey, listen, uh, Tracy's going off on a cruise ship, hairdressing, you know. A cruise ship? Oh, don't you start. Come out, get a move on. Look at the Addy line. Are you soft as busy as living there? Stop panicking, will you? What are you doing walking around with evidence on you? They're not going to be able to trace these here. Look, you, I'm getting a little bit sick of all this knocking off. Where's it leading to? I don't know, but I'll tell you where it's got me. I've paid off me fine, I've got myself some new gear, and I've got a cracker of a watch, OK? Yeah, and you've got form. If you were to get nicked for anything, the busies would clock that watch straight away. Oh, clock that watch, that's funny. Huh? Yeah, yeah, well, it won't be so clever, mate, when you get pulled. Listen, I'm not bothered. When you worry about it, you've got guilt written all over your face. I might as well wear a sign over me head saying I am a villain. But you're getting in deeper. Yeah, and that is just the way I want it. I've tried all that settling down like with Cathy, and it doesn't work. Do you know something? I have got no family left to speak of. Our Billy's been dragged off down to Basingstoke by that whinge and Sheila. Don gets murdered by God, and so what have I got to lose, eh? And the last bit of family I had left, my own daughter, she's gone and binned me off. So, yeah, I am getting in deeper. But I'll tell you something. The next job I do is going to be bigger and dead organised. This is the new me. Great work. Magnolia. Charles.
Frank, kids shouting, throwing things. The teacher just couldn't handle it. I got a real pat on the back of the head. I mean, I, well, I know I might have stepped over the mark, but it just came to me so easy. I had a really confident feeling about what I was doing there. Just working out the route to Torquay. Someone owed that M5. Frank, are you listening to me? Sorry. Well, I was just saying that it felt so right for me. I wasn't nervous. All right, I know I wasn't teaching, and that's the stressful part, but... Being on the road's more stressful than standing in front of a gang of school kids. Oh, Frank, these kids were taking advantage of a new teacher. She only finished college last September. There was mayhem in that classroom. Well, it's the last day of school. Probably just letting her hair down. Oh, no, it was more than that. Probably fed up with all that authority. Oh, Frank, you can't excuse that sort of behaviour. Well, I'm not trying to excuse it. But it gets on your wick, people tell you what to do all day. I got stopped again this morning by some copper because I failed to indicate. Frank, I'm talking about kids misbehaving in the classroom, and you're talking about a policeman doing his job? What are you on the copper side for? I'm not on the copper side. Oh, forget it. Anyway, we shouldn't be arguing now, should we? Well, I've got the route boxed off. M62, M6, M5, then a trunk road, nearly 300 miles. Oh, are you sure we're doing the right thing? You what? Well, it's such a long way away and he's got nobody close to him. Chris, he's nearly a man. I was working when, when I you was... were 15, I know. But you weren't playing professional football and having your legs kicked out from under you. I was playing for the Oakfield in the Sunday League. That's worse. I mean, his football career, this is just YTS. If he does get a proper football job, well, how long's it going to last? And what's he going to do then? You just ain't being proved wrong, don't you, Chris? School's not the answer to everything, you know. I've done all right without all that education. Ah, Sammy's doing all right. She could do a lot better. Yeah, but she's settled. She's ditched the half of Tim like I knew she would. Oh, yeah, I thought you'd throw that one back in my face. No, I'm just saying she's all right, that's all. She's going out with a nice fella today and he's young. No, who is it? Well, I don't know. But she's all dolled up. So that's her and Jeff OK. Ah, Katie's fine. I'm happy because me lad's doing what he's good at. And you're OK because your family's happy. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm not happy. Oh, of course I'm pleased the children are content for the moment. But what about me? Frank, my life is at a standstill. Chris, there's a recession on. You've got a house, a job and a family. And I've got a brain in my head. I'm about to become redundant as a mother. Once our Katie grows up, well... Motherhood's just an advisory capacity then, isn't it? They're only going to come to me to lick their wounds. Oh, don't talk soft, Chris. It's the same for me. I'm a dad all the time. I'm not talking about being a dad. When you've carried a child around inside you for nine months, well, it's different. And then when they leave the nest, well, you long for them to be close. You know you've got to let them go. Chris, I think you could do at this school holiday. A few lie-ins and you'll be all right. I don't want to lie in. I'll be bored stiff during the holiday and then it's back to typing letters for some teacher who can't even spell. Well, I don't know. I reckon you should be grateful to have any job. There's women who kill for those hours. Yeah, all right, Frank. Don't worry, Chris. You're just tired of that's all. So what else is it then? I don't know. I suppose it's difficult to know what things to call secrets. I mean big things, Dee. I don't know if you've been with this fella or that fella. Same as you don't want to know what happened before you came on the scene. Nothing. I cracked. I couldn't take it. I thought I was never going to get out of that psychiatric hospital. Were you committed or what? As a voluntary patient. Voluntary? You mean you stuck yourself in there? The doctor said I should go in, so I did, and I found once I was there, my life caved in. So you'd been better off not going in? I couldn't stay out. If I hadn't been a voluntary patient then, I mightn't have been here now. But I am here. Maria was a part of that. She was the cleaner. She just used to say hello to begin with. And then she found out I'd been a novice nun, and she was well, fascinated. Well, she was too young to ask why I was a nun and really understand. I mean, about the religion and the vocation. She's not the only one. Well, for true Catholic families, there's no greater honour than somebody in the family taking vows. Well, it's better for your lad becoming a priest. My mum and dad were so proud when I said I wanted to go into the convent. 
You didn't go in just to make them proud, did you? I'm not sure. I certainly didn't improve my education. A lot of girls talked about becoming nuns, but just usually a passing phase. But for me, well, I mentioned it once to me, Mum and Dad, and they were so pleased. I mean, my dad never held me. But that day, he hugged me. I just got taken up with the whole thing. So you didn't want to do it, really? I don't know. If people are telling you that becoming a nun is what you should be doing from an early age, then will you believe it to be your future? I can see why Maria was fascinated. She was always there, even on a day off. Oh, yeah, she would be, wouldn't she? Saint Maria. She was to him. You should have told me, though, dear. Not just because of this stuff with Maria, but years ago. I mean, if she hadn't been having an affair, I don't suppose any of this would have come out, would it? I mean, like, would you ever have told me? I was frightened. I didn't know how you'd react. Look how you did. I didn't know where you were. I told you. I was just at a drinking club in town. Hung around till a cafe owned. What are you? I'm scared, Dee. I'm dead scared. What of? You having a mental illness. I had a mental illness. But it might come back. All these years, I've told jokes about nutters and now I find I'm... Living with one? Ron, I'm still your wife and the mother of your children. It makes no difference. Look, no one knows except you, me, Derek and Maria. Anyway, mental illness is nothing to be ashamed of. Why didn't you tell me then? Because I was concerned about telling you I was a nun and the two things were interwoven and I couldn't tell you one without the other and... Oh, Ron... I was so nervous when I met you. I nearly suffocated when you asked me out. I thought, I've got mental illness written all over me and everybody's gonna see it. But you just sat and cracked jokes all night. So I got you on the rebound from a shrink, eh? Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> what? I was just thinking. If all this mental illness business could be passed on, it'd explain a lot about our kids, wouldn't it? <laughs> Look, Ron, I've kept a part of myself from you for so long, I believed it to be the truth. I've lied all the time I've known you, but I wanted to tell you the day after I met you, but I was so much in love with you. I still am, Ron. I couldn't run the risk of losing you. And I feel... I love you as well, you know that, don't you? You do know that, don't you, love? I just want us to go on, to go forward. But no more secrets, eh, love? Let's just do the best we can, together. <laughs> All right. Hi, uh, is Josie in? It's for you, Jos. Yes. It's about the other day. It's all right, we've had the house fumigated. I've come to apologise. Well, Max has found out from his children's mother that they had head lice before they came here, so, um, they gave them to Thomas. And? She means who else have they given it to? Well, obviously, he must have passed them on to your children. I'm sorry, it was a bit insensitive of me. A bit? Very insensitive. You must have been quite upset by what I said. I don't know. Maybe you were right to accuse me of being a racist. I just didn't think my motives through at the time. So? Well, it certainly won't happen again. That's what they all say. Look, I really am sorry, you know. I know. Sorry's meant to make it all better, is it? Everyone deserves one more chance, Jos. So many one more chances, Mick. As many as it takes. All right, Vinny, mate. How's it going, kid? Sound. Sound. Nice one. Give us a drink, will you, Sid? Oh, what did your last one die of? Hey, he's a guest. He's here to sample our hospitality. Go ahead. Hey, I'll have a seat, mate. Hose his mouth. Who's... 
He's all right. You can trust him. Don't worry. Any more gear? Uh, not at the moment, but, you know, fingers crossed on that, like. Well, listen, the people who I transport the goods to were impressed. All right. I was made up myself, you know. A load of good stuff there. No wondering if that... Hey, business, OK. My colleagues and myself are wondering if you'd like to join us in a venture. What sort? Big. How many in the team, like? It's not sorted yet. Still after a few more soldiers. So, where? Uh... Am I in defo then, or what? Like I say, they were impressed. You're in if you want to be. When? Soon. Count me in. Great. Listen, why don't you come up to Newcastle and meet some of the lads? Sounds. All right, he's rotting. I'm afraid he's not love, are you a friend? Sort of. Oh, secret stuff, is it? Undercover. Yeah, you might say we work together when he's undercover, yeah. Well, he's not here, pet. I'm his nan, and I'm just helping to tidy up. Go away, you're not his nan, are you? Oh, I thought you were his man. You look dead young. <laughs> look after your skin, lad, and look after your looks. <laughs> hey, nice dog. Oh, wouldn't touch it, love. Devil dog. Take a man's hands off. Oh, get away with you. Oh, watch you. I'll have you. <laughs> oh, don't talk rubbish. Who's a lovely boy, then? <clears throat> Any message? Yeah. Uh, will he be long? Oh, we can never tell. Um, I'd invite you in for a couple, and I've got to get going myself. Oh, right, uh, <clears throat> Well, given this, uh, tell him Arthur called, and I'll be back. Of course I will. And I'm glad he seems to be getting such nice friends. Yeah. Hiya. Oh, hey. Owen, I just want to wait. I can't believe it. Owen! <sighs> How are you keeping? I'm brilliant. What was that it then? Was that your word? I wanted to say I was sorry. Oh, sorry. Who for, eh? Yourself? You were always strong on self-pity, weren't you? I wanted to say I was sorry for making a fool of you. I just got carried away. I was so pleased to see you in that. And I was... You were drunk. So what's new, eh? You'll always be an alky, won't you? Now, if you don't mind, I'm waiting to meet someone and she won't want you knocking around here, so just get lost. Go ahead. Beat it. Owen, look, I just want to chat, for old times' sake. Look, old times mean the past, and you mean the past. Yeah, but it was a shame we split up like we did. A shame? You are joking, aren't you? I spent months with you, girl, and I'd have done anything for you, and you knew it. You'd have me like some big soft kid picking daisy petals. She loves me one minute, she loves me not the next, and you just dropped me. Well, you're too late, all right? You've done me head in and I'm over you now. Now get lost! Look, I'm different now. Let's just give it a go or something, please. I've grown up now. Oh, God, what's she doing here? I don't know. Just came out there. She was like a bad dream. What is it with you, eh? First, you were drunk hanging around us at the disco, and now you followed me to college. Owen, I just want to talk. Yeah, but I don't want to talk to you, all right? There you are. You've heard it now. He doesn't want to know you, and he doesn't want to look at you. Owen, tell us to get lost. There's nothing here for you. Go and make eyes with someone else. Owen, oh, look, leave it, will ya? Owen, I said keep away! I did warn you. Let's go. I'm sorry, Owen. Couples decide whether they're meant for each other by trying out another mate in Change of Heart, next on Living.
Didn't you go dash off to the shops? I didn't do that, so. Oh, come on, dear. How long have I known you? You don't want me in the house, do you? Oh, Marie, it's not me. Wrong. Yeah, he doesn't want you in the house. I'm sorry, but that's what he said. You should never have told him. I have to. I mean, he's going to embarrass you by joking about it. I mean, you and your fancy man. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about telling him about your illness. I never thought you'd tell him about that. Is that why he doesn't want me in the house? Oh, it's part of it. Secrets. I mean, he was upset at finding out things the way he did and shocked to find out I was in the psychiatric hospital. I suppose you had to strike out at something. Anyway, what did you do in the first place? Why does anybody have an affair? I found somebody that I like better than my own husband, and it's just as simple as that. Perhaps the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. It makes me feel like I am somebody. Maria, I don't know how you could live with yourself. I honestly don't. your mistake by telling all about me and Peter and then about telling about you and your illness. But now I'm glad I told him. I mean, it's been on my conscience for years and years and now I feel much better. I don't know why I felt guilty about having a mental breakdown, but I did. Probably still do. But I'm glad he knows. I took a bit of a chance telling him though, didn't you? Chance? Yeah, the way he'd react. I mean, he did disappear, didn't it? I must have wondered if he'd ever come back. No, I didn't. I know him too well. I responded as most men would. He needed time to take it in. And when he had, he came home. And since then, our marriage has been all the better for it. Oh, why don't you talk to Charlie about your problems? What do you mean? Maria, you're having an affair. That means there's something wrong with your marriage. Happily married men and women don't have affairs. Oh, think about it. Talk to Charlie and try and sort it out before it goes too far. I'm happy the way things are. Oh, Maria, it's wrong. Why? Well, you're lying to Charlie, and I'm having to lie to Ron. And when you got married to Charlie, you promised you'd love him forever. That was a different Charlie. He was a bright young man then. I mean, he even made me laugh. He made me happy. Oh, yeah, and you haven't changed. Oh, of course I have. And what happens if it was the other way around and Charlie was having an affair? I don't think I'd mind, really. Oh, you would. I wouldn't be grudging being as happy as I am. Happy? Oh, it's got to end in tears. Hiya, Julia. Oh, well, no, I'm just going round to yours. Ah, yes. Has he turned up then yet? Who? The elusive Pimpernel, Cyril Dixon. No, I haven't got a clue. Man, it's all right for you two, happily married and always knowing where they are. Well, it, is it urgent? Urgent? Very urgent. Is there anything I can do? I don't think so. Not at the moment, no. It's just between him and me for the time being. Oh, but if you do see him before I find him, will you tell him I've had an interesting chat with a woman from Morecambe and another one from Overhampton? And the grave's looking very nice. The chickens have come home to roost. I'll be at my grandchildren's. I hope you won't get into trouble with Patricia for letting me in. Oh, no, Susanna, honestly, she won't mind. I, not that we've discussed you coming round or anything, but... Well, you've brought Matthew and Emma around before, haven't you? I can see they're very lucky to have someone as diplomatic as you working for them. What made you want to be a nanny, Margaret? I don't know, really. The smell of the nappies, the roar of the wind. <laughs> you make it sound awful. I'm a mother, I know. What time do you think Max will be home, then? Oh, well, he's usually home by now, but he's been busy with round table business lately. Oh, so he's still playing at the round table, then, is he? Yeah, he's vice chairman or something this year. Well, I suppose he deserves some sort of recognition. He always did put a lot of time and effort into it. Must get a bit crowded round here when my two stay over. No, we manage OK. How do you get on with my two? Matthew and Emily. Um, 
Find the great kids. Oh, I'm glad you think so. I'd tell them to behave for you, but I don't mind if they give their dad hell. Hello? Hello? What are you grinning at? Oh, I was just saying hello, that's all. I've been out of the office most of the day. It's the first chance I've had to talk to you. I looked for you this morning. What happened? I caught the bus. Oh, I drove past at the usual time. I didn't see you. Uh, I think the bus must have come a bit early. Are you sure? I thought I... I'm sorry. What for? For pestering you. Oh, I didn't know you were. Well, I'm not. I'm sorry. It's just that I got used to our routine. Well, it's hardly a routine. But... I'm sorry, I'm not explaining myself very well. Yeah, I've sort of got used to looking forward to seeing you first thing tomorrow. Graham, I don't want you to feel obliged to give me a lift every morning. Well, it's no trouble. It's on... <laughs> it's almost on my way. I do appreciate it, but just don't go half your way, that's all I'm saying. And occasionally Terry will give me a lift, you know, when he's on the right shift. All right. It's just... What? I like talking to you. It's the only chance I get. You're talking to me now? True. But you know what people are, jumping to the wrong conclusions and that. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You. You're funny. You mean funny strange or funny amusing? Both. It, this is her perfume. Yeah, it's lovely. I know I use it as well. well that's a coincidence. Probably not. Unfortunately, men are rather devious creatures. Then again, I suppose they're no worse than women. Some women. Max used to buy this one for me. I bet he used to buy it for Patricia at the same time. And then I'd never suspect his sweet-smelling self returning from a liaison with the other woman. You don't think he'd do that, do you? Probably that would be one of the first things he'd think of. I could never think of things like that, me. I'd be hopeless at anything where I had to lie. I just couldn't do it. It's because you're young and innocent. Deception, like a lot of other tools in adult life, has to be learnt. I always wondered why he suddenly started watching the media show. Patricia watches that. Exactly. Owen. All right. What are you doing here? Just came round to make sure you're all right and to apologise for Grace's behaviour. Look, you shouldn't have bothered us again. But I suppose she shouldn't have hit you, should she? It's all right. Nothing that can't be helped by a bit of makeup. Are you coming in? No, 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 I'm getting off. Just wanted to make sure you were all right, as I said, like. Well, please come in. Well, I mean, you might as well now. You're here, have a cup of coffee. No strings attached. All right, then. I've got ten minutes. So how did you, you know... ..find out that Max was cheating on me? Well, yeah. Well, now I can smile, but at the time... He went away for a long weekend, supposedly on a course. He thought of everything, phoned me from the hotel and all that. But... Max may be clever and deceptive, but, well, as you must know by now, he's terribly untidy. You found out because he's untidy? Yes. Well, that confirmed it. I suspected he was having an affair for some time. From the time I realised how considerate and kind he was being and wanting to take me to strange wine bars, even the theatre. He knew she'd be there, you see. But why am I taking silly chances? 
so I suspected something, and the course confirmed it. Because he's untidy. He came back from the course with presents for us all. Oh, he was shattered, poor man. There was even a well-planned phone call from a colleague saying he'd forgotten some papers and they'd be passed on at the office. Very clever. And then I opened his suitcase. Well, what did you find? His dirty washing. All folded neatly and obviously not by Max. Patricia. Wanting to show how domestic she could be. All that planning, all that expense. And I got found out over something so simple. Yeah, but, I mean, you couldn't be absolutely sure, could you? No. And I didn't really want it confirmed. The last thing in the world any wife wants is confirmation that her husband's having an affair. But I could not do anything. So what did you do? Followed my instincts. I said, she's packed this nicely for you. And what did he say? He said, yes. She insisted. So what did you say? I felt sick. It was my first reaction. Sick and betrayed. And then I thought to myself, I'm not going to be seen as the pathetic little wife. And I said, Max, I think this calls for a solicitor. Hello, Patricia. Hello. What are you doing here? I need to borrow your husband. We need to be Mr. and Mrs. Farnham again. Any word from him, Margaret? Um, no, but I've just been telling Susanna he's been busy with table business lately. Have you known? I think it would be best if I waited outside in the car. Did you work part-time in a cafe? Don't know. A change, money, I suppose. Anyway, not just any old cafe, you know, it's like being in America. It sounds great. So I like, like, it's all genuine American stuff, like the tables, the chairs, catering equipment, the food, the decor. The only thing that's not American is the customers. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Oh, and I'm glad to see you back at college. How's your legs? All right, apart from the occasional twins when it's thundering. Really? Are oh, you kidding? I'm not. Well, um, everything's going good for you then. Yeah, apart from when it's not dungeon. Still, that's history, isn't it? Anyway, um, look about Grace. I didn't realise she had such a bad temper. You'll have to be careful. Well, I suppose she'll be all right. I mean, she obviously thinks a lot about you and you here. Now, she's the girl I'm looking around with at the moment. Anyway, look, I better be shooting off. Thanks for the drink. Will I see you again? Don't know. Well, maybe I could come and see you down at the cafe. I'm risking another punch off Grace. Oh, she'll be all right, but you know, she knows you're no threat. Oh, um, do you still go down the gym, or did you give it up now? You're fully mobile. No, I give it up. I should take it up again, really, because I really enjoyed it when I was doing it. Trouble is, finding somewhere everywhere is so expensive. Well, I could see if I could get you a staff discount, you know, to join the ledge centre in the hotel. It's dead good, like. I mean, there's a gym, sauna, swimming pool. Well, normally it costs you hundreds to join, but I reckon I could get you a dead cheap. Yeah? Um, let me think when the best time is. Friday? Oh, sorry. I suppose you'll be seeing Grace on Friday. No, um, I think she goes up with a mate on a Friday, actually. Are you working? No. Well, look, I just thought it'd be nice to catch up on the gossip, that's all. Sorry I mentioned it. It's great of you to offer. Oh, good. So, what time, then? I am. Um... Well, listen, I finish at two, so I'll see you then, maybe. I'll tell you what. I'll do my best, eh? See ya. Are you finished for the day? 
Yes. It hardly seems worth starting on something else after getting back to the office. It's all right for some. You'll be finishing yourself soon. Fancy a quick drink on the way home. No, uh, I better not, but thanks anyway. Oh, why not? Just a quickie. Fran will probably come, and then I can drop you off at home. No, I better not. I've got to pick Danny up on the way home anyway. Some other time, then? Yeah, perhaps. Just say yes. You'll make me a happy man. Perhaps. It's only a drink with a couple of work colleagues. It's not a wild party. That might be the way Terry sees it, though. I thought everything was fine between you two now. Well, it is. We've had a bit of a bad patch. I mean, most couples do, don't they, at some point. But now he's back off regular nights, thank God. We can get back to normal. Well, then there's no problem in an after-office hours drink with work colleagues once in a while. Once in a while? Great. So when? Graham. There's obviously something else, and you don't want to tell me. What do you mean? If your marriage is sound, then that's not a problem. Fran is your friend, so I must be the problem. Well, you are not the problem, are you? If there is something, I would appreciate you telling me. I can sort it out. Don't be so sensitive. Then just say you'll come for a drink. Sometime. All right, I will. But not tonight. A definite sometime. Is good enough for the time being. Nice. Hello. Hi. Uh, Susanna, she was waiting out in the car. You don't mind if she comes in, do you? No. It's just that uh, we have things to discuss, and it did seem a little eccentric as sitting out in the car. Do you want me to leave the room? No, 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 no. Don't be silly, Patricia. Uh, shall we all sit down? I am sorry to disturb you. Yeah, let's just be uh, civilised about this, shall we? Uh, Susanna has to contact me, and I think uh, we should deal with the business in hand. What exactly have you come for? Well, Susanna's here to discuss the children's schooling. I think it's an important matter and deserves careful thought. Are you uh, removing them from their present school because of the head lice problem? Patricia? No, it's a valid question, Max. But it might surprise you to know that, statistically, children who tend to suffer from head lice come from the cleanest homes and better schools. We're moving them to increase their chances of a better education. And the fees will rise accordingly, I suppose. My father is still paying the bulk of it. So, um, when would you like to look round? As soon as possible. I suppose the weekend's no good. Sorry, but it has to be a weekday. How's Monday next week? Yeah. Yeah, looks fine to me. Oh, I have to be back for table meeting, though. Of course. Will you pick me up, or shall I come here? I think it's better if I pick you up. Is that all right with you? What time? Eleven all right? Fine. And how are all the round tablers and their various partners? Fine. Are Lucinda and Geoffrey Fletcher still together? Uh, yes, they seem happy enough. Geoffrey's chairman now. Oh, I know. Your Margaret told me. And your vice chairman, I believe. Yes. So, um, Monday, 11.30, then. Oh, 11. Please, try not to be late. Max has this habit of thinking that if he turns out of the house just before he's due anywhere, it'll be all right. Oh, I'm sorry. You obviously know all his little foibles and fantasies by now. I see myself out. Yes. Right, well, I'll uh, see you Monday, then. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye, Patricia. What did she mean? I... I... I don't know. Foibles and fantasies? What, what, what were the two of you talking about before you came in? The children. Uh, don't be silly, Patricia. I... Oh, really? 
Well, it's obvious to me she still fancies you, the way she was flirting. The children, that's all there is between us now. Oh, look, come on, Susanna, don't be stupid. <laughs> Patricia, uh... She's obviously on your mind. Yeah, well, of course she's still on my mind. We're still talking about it. She's only just left, for God's sake. I don't see why you have to ferry her around from school to school. They are still my children, and for reasons that she's pointed out, we still have to be Mr and Mrs Farnham. I'm your wife. You should have discussed it with me. Well, all right, then. Let's discuss it, then. I'm sorry. I've just put Thomas down. But would you know if you had a sister? Who? Cyril, your father-in-law. I see. Or oh, hasn't he got a sister in Wolverhampton? I've told you, Julie. I don't know why you keep asking me. He doesn't have a sister in Wolverhampton. He doesn't have a sister anywhere. It'd be wrong's auntie, your children's great auntie, your auntie-in-law. Either he has or he hasn't. <sighs> you must have your wires crossed. Why don't you just ask, Cyril? Oh, don't worry. I will when I find him. I think he must be off on another mission. But, Julie, I've got to go and put the tea on. I'll see you. Oh, listen, if you see him, tell him I was asking. Tell him we have to talk, cos I know all about his little missions. I will. See ya. All right, Nan. Hi, you love. Oh, it's terrible when you fellows involved in secret work. I wouldn't know, then. Mm, I wish it could be like you, carefree and happy. Nothing to worry about, only your wedding plans. That's the way I should be. But you can't choose who you fall for. Giving you the run around, is he, Nan, yeah? Oh, I don't know what he's up to. Well, I know part of it, but I can't discuss that with you or anyone. I mean, you'd understand that more than most, being in the special squad yourself. I'm just an ordinary cop, Nan. But you were undercover when you met your intended. It was just a one-off. Uh, do you fancy putting the kettle on? Nice cup of tea in there. All right. Thought I'd just check you're all eating properly. Is Diana coming round? Yeah, um, half seven. Oh, lovely. Such a reliable partner. <gasps> oh, I wish I'd fallen for somebody ordinary. Anyway, I'll make that drink. Great. Ooh. I nearly forgot. A mate of yours told me to give you this. He's up the road. I don't know why I couldn't give it you himself. But he said you'd understand. Anyway, his name's Arthur, and he's got a dog. Cheers, lad. decide whether they're meant for each other by trying out another mate in Change of Heart, next on Living. <laughs>